As the seasons go by, more attacking operators are added. With that being said, there are 28 attacking operators at the time of this recording. So, in a 5v5 tactical shooter, there's bound to be a lot of operators that are unused and underrated. So in this video, I want to break down my top 5 underrated operators in Rainbow Six Siege. Before the video starts, make sure that you drop a like, sub, and comment. I would love to hear your thoughts on this list. Let me know what you think I did right and what I did wrong with this list. Also, this top 5 is of course not in order, so don't get your panties in a nut. Let's get right into it. Number 1 is Gridlock. I think there's two major things that make Gridlock unappealing. Of course, one is her speed, and two is the choice of Nomad. Gridlock has one of the best all-around loadouts from her great AR, the F90, or if you don't like the F90, you can always use the LMG, which is the F249. They're both great options. For her secondary, she has a Super Shorty, and then she has a SDP, which is a pistol, but who is realistically going to use that on Gridlock when you have a Super Shorty? Her having a super shorty allows her to play vertical, open hatches, make rotate, whatever. And it even allows her to take close range engagements with confidence. For her secondary gadget, she has a smoke grenade and a breach charge. Breaching charge allows her to play vertical, get rid of castles, etc. Just allows her to be more versatile. Using smoke grenades on gridlock it could be very effective, especially in post plant. Mixing that with her primary gadget, which is, of course, the track stringers, she's just all around such a good operator, and she deserves a spot in this top 5. Now, I understand that most people are going to pick Nomad over Gridlock, especially for a dedicated flank watch, but I feel like Gridlock shines putting her gadgets in post-plant scenarios. There's nothing like baiting a defender trying to shoot all those track stringers, because three of those track stringers can fill up a whole room. And that, that's going to be a pain in the butt trying to retake sight and then try to kill off the people that's left off and defuse while going around these big spiky things. Number two is Cavatel. Cavatel shines because he's one of a kind when it comes to versatility. He has two fire bullets, two smoke bolts, and then he has the choice of claymores or stun grenades. He's also one of the only attackers that are three speed that can bring an LMG. All around, he's just such a good operator. The only hard counter to... Capital is, of course, Wamai with his Wamai disc, but the point that Capital has two stun grenades just makes him so more versatile because he can burn those Wamai discs, he can even probably use one smoke or one flame arrow, and then he still has one flame arrow and then a smoke, which is going to make post plane a lot easier and more effective. It's great also because you need to burn a lot of utility to get rid of somebody behind a shield. Uh, you throw stuns, you know, and then you can get quick peek if someone's sitting behind a shield. But with Capital, you can just shoot fire arrows, get the person off the shield, because you can't really just sit there and withstand all the fire. If you try to, you're going to die. And even if you try to run away, you're going to be messed, because as soon as you run away, you're going to get shot in your butt. It's kind of like the smoke grenades, though, the fire arrows, because the tick is so quick. So it's such a win-win. It's such an underrated utility. Number three is Dokubi. Dokubi is one of those operators that her pick rate went down as soon as, for example, Lion and Finca got nerfed. Especially Lion. I feel like ever since then, she's been overlooked a lot of the times, especially because her primary is only a DMR. Now, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with DMRs. DMRs are actually very underrated in the game, but fire rate, most of the time, is what's going to get you killed, sadly. Let's not even look at the loadout right now, because even though her loadout is decent... I feel like what stands out with Dokubi is she takes control of camps. And that alone should be a great reason just to even think about picking Dokubi. Even though you're kind of putting yourself in a weird predicament using a DMR. But the DMR isn't that bad if you, if you make yourself get used to the DMRs. Let's not even look at her loadout first. Let's look at her abilities. Because that's where I feel like she shines the most. In my opinion, she has two abilities. She can first, she can call phones, giving you the audio of whereabouts of exact locations of where the enemy actually is. And two, she can hack cams. Now, that is free intel, and that is taking all the intel the enemies have. And that is just insane to think about. Just think all the times that you clutched around because you had a Maestro cam, or you had a Valkyrie cam, Echo cam, or any default cams. Just having that free intel is just... It, it baffles me because it's so underused to the point that she's on this list. For Lodo, her primary, she has the MK14, which is the DMR, and she has the Boss G shotgun. 
and in no way you should be using the boss g in my opinion unless you're just a god with the smg uh 12 but the mk14 is actually a pretty good dmr like i said it's a dmr but it's good for her secondary she's a c75 and smg12 machine i feel like that's where she shines the most even though they're both uh One's high in recoil, which is the SMG-12, and the other just has a fat iron sight. I wish that they actually made it so you can put a sight onto it, like a red dot or even a reflex, kind of like Kali's uh, SMG. But it's still fine where it's at because the C-75 has no recoil. It's just the fat iron sight. It's so huge. For her gadget, she has a smoke grenade and she has stun grenades, which, to be honest, both very useful, very great. I remember when she had grenades, she was highly picked at then, but, you know... Smoke grenades and stuns is still very good for burning ADSs, burning utility, and just, you know, getting a plant down. Number four in my personal favor on this list is Fuse. Now, the thing that makes Fuse stand out the most, in my opinion, is that he has four cluster charges now. Like, I even thought he was underrated when he had three. But him having four, just think about this. In one cluster charge, he can, almost, he can take out two ADSs and then a half of the last ADS. Just that, and then him having three more is is crazy to think about that. He's not a high-picked operator. Just the spread of his cluster charges can, t can clear a whole room of utility, whether that's Maestro Cams, Echo Cams, ADSs, Barbed Wire, you know, you name it. He can take out literally anything. Now, of course, I think the biggest problem with Fuse is his speed. I feel like they went the wrong way in actually buffing him. I feel like they should have made him a 2-2 with two cluster charges because two cluster charges is still amazing. The spread of those things are crazy. He almost has the same issue that Gridlock has and that's mainly just the speed. He has a great loadout. His primary, he has an AK-12 with an angle grip. You can use a literal angle grip. The only issue with AK-12 is that it has Russian sights. You don't have the option to, you know, use the normal ACOG, but you know, he is Russian, so cool. He also has a ballistic shield. You're literally trolling if you're using this, by the way. Uh, they need to actually make it so he can run like Blitz, um, even though he's 3 armor, but whatever. Uh, he has the 6P41 light machine gun. It's always a good pick, but you have the AK-12, which is statistically the best gun in the game. For secondary, he has the PMM, my favorite pistol in the entire game. The thing is just so good. But he also has the GSH-18 handgun. It's not a bad, like... You know, secondary pistol, but the PMM is, of course, better. For secondary gadget, he has a breaching charge and smoke grenades. I feel like just the point that he has breaching charges allows him to be more versatile. He can play more vertical. He can get hatches. He can do almost everything that you need him to. Smoke grenades allows him for, of course, post-plant scenarios. But, you know, you're better off going with breaching charges most of the time. At number five is Ayana. Out of all the operators on this list, she's my personal fun mess around operator she's she's still good in a comp aspect but she's one of those operators that you can have a lot of fun with just to the point that she has frag grenades and basically three drones which the third drone is almost unlimited uh th th it's just insane to me because you can instead of wasting your two drones getting shot and then you have no intel you can just throw a clone in there and it's just playing mind games. That's that's probably why she's so fun is you can play so much mind games with the enemy team because sound cues will be messed up. If you're playing in a, in a comp aspect or like you're actually playing in a coordinated uh, environment, it, she can definitely be useful just because of the sound cues, of course. Now, looking at her loadout, she has a G36C, an ARX200. I personally enjoy the G36C with angle grip with an ACOG because, you know, the ADS... Uh, speed is a lot quicker and no recoil. Her secondary is the MK1 9mm. It's Buck's pistol. It's a good pistol. You don't you don't really use I I, I personally don't use it that much. Um, besides on Buck, so it's very cool to actually show some love to that pistol. All around, she's just a fun operator. So that was my top five underrated operators on attack. Uh, let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. I will try to respond to them if possible. Uh, but if you like the video, like and subscribe and have a lovely day.